Hey everyone, Robin Riley for Del Bellows Designs. Welcome to my Talk Crafty To Me video tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create some unique backgrounds simply by using the Distress Watercolor Pencils by Tim Holtz. You'll see that this is such an easy and fun project to do. And each time you create one, it's going to be so awesome. The only thing is you'll never duplicate it. They're one and done. And that's what makes them so unique, I think. So here, this is a card I did. This was actually my practice piece of card. And it was my very first attempt at trying this technique. And for not knowing what I was doing, I thought this came out pretty cool. Okay, so let me, before we get started, invite you to those Facebook groups that we have. You know, we have two Facebook groups. We have the Del Bellos Design Lounge. That's where we showcase all of those wonderful Lavinia products. And then we have this other page. It's called the Del Bellos Design a la carte. That's where we showcase everything else that Patty currently has in her shop. We are on other social media platforms, just like Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And if you want to come over there, and find us, all you have to do is search hashtag Del Bellos Designs. Okay, let's get started on the supplies that I am going to be using today. I'm going to do this demo on four different types of cards for you because I want you to be able to use what you have in your stash. So here is a piece of Strathmore mixed media paper and it weighs 117 pounds and it's 190 GSM. The higher the GSM number, the more liquid the paper can manage to hold onto without warping. So it's, I think today's demo will show you that difference with the heavier weights. Now, the pound does matter, especially when you're making cards. Uh, 117 is a nice, weight of a card. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. Uh, for a comparison, I believe printer paper is about 80 pounds. Don't quote me on that, but I, I think that's kind of a good guesstimation. Okay, so I'll be using the Strathmore Mixed Media for one of the demonstrations. This is the heavyweight card that I use when I make my card toppers. It weighs 110 pounds and it's 270 GSM. You see, this is definitely a higher number than that original piece I showed you. This paper works wonderful for adding any type of liquids. It doesn't warp. Yes, it can warp if you overdo it. And that's just something you learn as you go. I'm going to be using a piece of Canson watercolor card. This weighs 140 pounds and it's 300 GSM. Definitely a thicker piece of card and definitely heavier and will hold a lot of water. And then lastly, we'll use the Lavinia Multifarious card. Now, I looked everywhere to find an actual weight, and all I can find is it simply states that it's heavyweight, but the GSM is 330, so this definitely also will hold a lot of liquid without warping. I will be using, from Ranger, the Distress Watercolor Pencils. There are three sets that are currently available, and they match exactly to all of the ink colors that are in the Distress line. Okay, so set one, you can see, I'm not going to read them to you, but you can see the colors that are in set one. Here is set two, the colors that are available. And this is set three. Now what makes these colored pencils unique is that they are woodless and you have to use a woodless colored pencil to do this technique. If there's wood in your shavings, naturally that's not going to interact with the water. So make sure if you're not using these exact watercolor pencils, you are using a woodless. Now I have also read and I have friends that have been able to use 
pencils with wood, you just have to be really careful not to get those wood pieces mixed in. So it's not impossible, but it is doable. These make life much easier. Okay, the other thing you're going to need is a pencil sharpener. Now this is just one from Generals. There's tons of pencil marker, pencil sharpeners on the market. You wanna make sure that the pencil fits in nicely and you get nice sized shaving pieces. And lastly, you just need some water. Using a spray bottle helps. Okay, let's get started. Let me start with set one. I'm just going to pick a few colors from this set and show you how they work. All right, and let's start with the mixed media paper. This is the one from Strathmore, 117 pounds, 190 GSM. Now there's two ways that you can do this. You can apply your water first onto your card and then place the shavings on the top or you apply the shavings first and then the water. What I have found with a lighter piece of card, it's better to put the shavings down first and add the water. And since this is a lighter card, smaller GSM number, that's the direction we're gonna go for this particular piece. Okay, so I'll just bring in my pencil sharpener and I'll pick three colors that if they blend together, they're not going to make mud. So I'm going to use speckled egg, salty ocean, along with picked raspberry. Does not matter the order in which you put these on. As with almost everything that we do, less is more. So as you can see, I'm sharpening and I'm getting very fine shavings from the pencil. Just going to flip that over and scatter them. And I typically like to sh do this upside down so that the shavings just fall randomly onto my card. Okay, let's do the next color. This was the Salty Ocean. I'll add just a small amount there. And then the Picked Raspberry. Okay, now, hopefully you can see, and pick this up and hopefully I don't breathe too heavy, but you can see they're just kind of smattered all over my card. Okay, now all you have to do is bring in the water give it a good spritz. I kind of stay away from it. If I get too close, I can blow some of those pieces off. Now I can sit here and just let it do its thing, or I can manipulate it by moving the paper to get the colors to run together. Now hopefully you can see here in the center, it's kind of globby, there's some big pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more water. I'm also going to grab a piece of paper towel just to soak up the edges. And what you can do at this point, you can just let this dry naturally. Those raised bits will be there and you can just brush them off and there'll be a light color underneath. What you can also do is take that piece of paper towel dab up some of that color and you can actually spread it around because those thicker shavings are going to leave some ink just right onto your paper towel. So you can move it that direction. I like to let these dry naturally. You can take a heat tool and add heat to it and get a really good result from that. Now that will cause some warping, but depending on the amount of time you have, you know, that, that is an option for you. I'm going to dab off this excess water, set this to the side, and we'll take a peek at this when we are finished with all of the others. Let me clean off my work surface. Um, next piece of card that I'll demo on is the heavyweight white card. This is the 
stuff that I use mainly when I create card toppers. 260 GSM. As you can see, this is going to hold more liquid. So going from the same exact method where I'm going to place the shavings onto my card first and then add the water. Okay, this is set two. And how about if I use, we'll use Mermaid Lagoon along with Mustard Seed and Kitsch Flamingo. Again, I'm just going to keep my pencil sharpener upside down and randomly add some of the shavings onto my card. Now I'm gonna go a little heavier on this because I know this can hold a lot more water than the original piece of card that I started with. All right, let me bring in this water, get it nice and wet. You can see I'm adding quite a bit of water onto this card. Now it's going to start to run and do its thing. I can manipulate it a little bit. Again, there are some chunky areas here. And I can add more water to help move that color around. Once again, I can come in with that paper towel and dab and spread some of that color around. You can see you don't get a ton of blending to take place here, at least not in this method. You get a little bit, not lots. Now, the one thing you can do, keep in mind, is once this is totally dry, you can come back in and add more layers. Okay, let's set this piece to the side to dry. Clean off my surface and grab a new paper towel. Now, this is the Canson watercolor card, 300 GSM. We're going up, meaning this is gonna hold more water. Now this time, what I'm going to do is the opposite. I'm going to add the water first and then add the shavings. The heavier the GSM, I would say anything 300 and up, add the water first. I think you'll see you get a different result. Before I add the water, let me choose my colors. Let's start with Crackling Campfire, Candied Apple, and Wild Honey. Okay, so I'm going to add a generous amount of water to my card, and I'm going to add those shavings right into the water. Now, if you just let this set, you're gonna get some nice movement from those shavings onto the watercolor card. Again, you can manipulate this however you would like. Here you can see some really good blending taking place. Again, watercolor card, I think is one of the nicer cards to do this technique on because of the amount of water that it can hold. And in all of these methods and on all of these papers, it is very easy to stamp right on top using your VersaFine Claire inks. Now, the one thing you must keep in mind when using watercolor paper especially cold pressed watercolor, is that there is some tooth to it. You know, there's a little bit of a design, a little um, pattern that you can see on the paper. So when you stamp on that, your stamping may not be perfectly clear on your first attempt. So you will have to stamp a few times your the same stamp over and over to get a nice clear image. Now, as you can see, I have added a ton of water to this card and it just continues to move and do its own thing. 
loving this watercolor paper result. If you're not getting enough blending and you want more, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm kind of twisting my paper towel into the colors to get them to blend. Again, once this dries, I can come right back in and add another layer if I would like. So that's a neat looking background. Okay, let's do the very last one together. Let me set this one to the side. Now this time I'm going to use the Multifarious card. Notice 330 GSM, the heaviest of all the card that we're using. What's really nice about using the Multifarious card, not only that 330 GSM, but it's perfectly smooth. No tooth on this piece of paper. So stamping onto this will be just like you stamp onto anything else. All right, I'm going to just stick with this same palette, the same set, number three. I'm going to use Seedless Preserves. And let's add in some Tattered Rose and even some Hickory Smoke. So, same method. I'm going to load this up with water. I'm going to add my shavings. Oh, that purple's really moving nice. Look at that go. So here, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but a lot of the water has already wicked through. So I'm just going to add more water to the card. And Multifarious, like I said, holds the most amount of water. So you can continue to add as much as needed. Let's move some of this around. Then I'm gonna come in with another piece of towel and mop up some of this excess water. Move around some of those colors. Okay, so I have almost all of the water mopped up. Not meaning that it's dry, but I've taken all of the excess water off. What I'm going to do is come back in, more water, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little more of the shavings. Now I'm really pressing fine into, I'm like, I'm not pressing hard at all with this pencil. I'm just getting the very tip top piece of the pencil itself. And you can see that movement. It does remind me a little bit of Brushos but you get more of these elongated pieces, and I kind of like the look of that, especially if I weren't adding more water. Oh, there's a little random blue piece that came from who knows where, but that's okay, that's kind of cool, makes it interesting. So once again, you could let this set and dry totally on its own, and you would keep the majority of what you see. But by dabbing it, you're going to stop a lot of that movement. Again, just depends on you know the look that you're going for. Okay, let me just, for the sake of time, dab off all the extra, clean off my space. Okay, and we'll take a look at these cards. Now they have sat here to dry a little bit, um, not totally dry by any means. But here we have that Strathmore. This is the mixed media card weighing 117 pounds, 117 pounds, excuse me, 190 GSM. This is a very thin piece of card, but I got some pretty good color on there. And this was the method where I applied the shavings first and then added the waters. The water, still a good result. And yes, you could stamp on top of this using your VersaFine Claire's and have really no issues whatsoever. It would work great. The next one we did this was the heavyweight white card. Okay, still very wet. But you can see I got nice coverage. I don't have much warping at all with this card. Again, we're at the 270 GSM level, so it, it stands a lot of water. 
And the one thing, you know, when you're doing activities like this on the card where you're using lots of liquid, I find it best to let them dry on their own. If I were to come in here with my heat tool and apply the heat and dry it quicker, then it would most definitely start to warp and curl on me. It's not a problem because you can always weight it down. You can always iron the paper. You can always run it through a die cut machine to flatten it out. So there's ways around it, but it's to me, it's best to let them just be. Again, being that this is relatively smooth, stamping on here would be relatively easy. The next one we did was the watercolor paper. I love the color combination on these. Now, this was the method that I applied water first. Remember, this is 300 GSM, one of our heavier pieces. I applied the water first, then the shavings. I did move it around a bit. I did dab it up a little bit. Uh, actually, this is almost dry, and that was really just a few minutes ago that I did this. But look how pretty that is. Now, the only issue working on cold water press is there's tooth meaning there's a little bit of a pattern you can see in the paper from where it was pressed. It's really not a problem. It just kind of, you're just going to have to stamp carefully and probably it would be best to use a stamping tool of some sort so that you can repeat stamp to get the clearest of images. And then lastly, this is the Lavinia Multifarious card, the heaviest, the 330 GSM card. And this held the most water without a doubt. Got some nice movement. If I would have been a little more patient and worked it a little bit more, I could have definitely brought more color out here. Keep in mind that once this is dry, no matter which type of card you're using, you can go back in and start all over again. Just try to repeat the same method. Remember, method being shavings first, then water, or water first, then shavings. So I hope this taught you something new, something you'd be willing to give a try. Lots of fun. I absolutely adore the Distress Watercolor Pencils. I use them probably more than anything I have in my stash at this point for coloring. I just, I just think they're fun and they're easy and they match with all the other Distress Oxides and inks that I have. So that makes it a lot easier too. Again, let me show you that card that I created with the first one. And this was on watercolor card. And I only had to like stamp each image twice to get it to be nice and vibrant and clear and not missing spots. So that, that's not bad at all for watercolor card. Okay, I hope you give this method a try. If you do so, like always, please tag me in your post and uh, share with us everything that you create. Most of all, have fun with what you're doing. Okay, guys, I'll see you again. Thanks. Bye-bye.